good morning. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. In the presence of the resurrected Christ, let us praise God, singing hymn number 207, Praise to the Lord, number 207. Please stand. Special good morning to all of you gathered here. We come together as a family of faith on this beautiful summer day and we continue our celebration calling upon our God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather as a family of faith today, a special uh, honor will be given to us as we welcome Liliana uh, into the community of the church. And after my homily, we will have a baptism and we will receive her into the communion of the Catholic Church, not only here at St. Francis, but the Universal Church. We take a moment to recognize that we are people who are together, a human family, who more times than not miss the mark of the invitations that God gives us to be people of love, we ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness and an openness for a change of heart. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to heal sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh who dwells among us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, we ask that you bestow in abundance your mercy upon all of us gathered here. Continue to be our guide. May we use the good things that pass in life in a way that hold fast to bring about your kingdom here on earth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, 
king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you are requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. The psalm response is number 765. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, The reign of God is like a buried treasure, which a man found in a field. He hid it again, rejoicing at his find, when he sold all that he had, and he bought the field. Or again, the kingdom of God is like the merchant. Search for fine pearls. When he found one valuable pearl, he went back, put up for sale all that he had, and he bought it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Once again, a very special welcome to all the community here at St. Francis, and of course, a special welcome to Lily Ann and to her family as uh, they come together here at St. Francis to celebrate Lily Ann's baptism into the communion of the church. And uh, we'll do that right after my homily. Uh, a while back, a good friend of mine from childhood, we attended grade school and high school together, uh, celebrated his 13th year in recovery uh, from AA. And he said, you know, Sean, as a lifelong Catholic, I have to admit, I really learned how to pray when I started AA. Like all people who struggle with addictions, John admitted that his life was a mess. It was in complete disarray. He was completely powerless. And of course, it brought him to his knees recognizing that he had to turn to God, the higher power, to make sense of life and to try to help him on his own human journey. And he came to discover through that like serenity prayer um, 
that he would be able to, um, there were certain things in life that he couldn't change. And the fact of the matter, he had to admit that he was an alcoholic. But he had a choice to stop his drinking. And that was a difficult choice he had to make, but it was a choice that was going to save his life. And he had to recognize, of course, the wisdom of making the right choice that was really for the better. And of course, we all know that the serenity prayer, that is not just for people who struggle with addictions, but it is a prayer that is applicable, I think, for all of us in life. Namely, because we often find that there are certain truths that uh, impact us that we have absolutely no control over. They're realities, whether we like it or not. Uh, we feel rather powerless, uh, whether it's the fact that maybe we have a child who has autism, we have uh, a mother who has Alzheimer's, uh, we have a spouse that has been unfaithful, we have in-laws we don't particularly care for. Those are realities, realities that we cannot change. But we do have the wonderful gift of free will, that we can make choices and choices that hopefully help us to confront this challenging reality in a way that is good, noble, honorable, and just. And of course, that requires the gift of wisdom to understand what really is the right choice to make. Regretfully, we will admit that more times than not, that gift of wisdom is not always so readily available. And on numerous occasions, we will make many, many wrong choices in terms of how we respond to certain truths that are anything but good. Sometimes our choices are blaming people. Sometimes we make excuses. We proceed to ignore the big elephant that's in the living room. Other times our choices are rooted more in anger, retribution, maleficence, or something that is not good or just or right for anyone and just perpetuates the evil that we seek to confront. But hopefully we discover the mistakes that we have made and the gift of wisdom enlightens us about the better choice. Today we hear in that first reading about Solomon uh, and the great prayer that he says. Here he is, a young child, and he is going to inherit his father's throne. He is going to be put in this leadership position that no child could possibly even begin to probably fulfill. And yet when he has a dream, where God is actually asking Solomon, what is it that you wish for? Unlike probably most youth his age, he could have said, oh, I want lots of money, I want lots of women and wives and lots of material possessions. I want to be the most powerful king in all the world. To the surprise and the shock of everyone instead, he said, I want an understanding of right heart and mind that I might be able to govern my people to be able to discern what is good and right for them. Of course, that was quite unbelievably prophetic. It was an example of the wisdom he had as a young child, which eventually contributed to him being a great leader, but it didn't always last. I can't help but to think when I compare and think of Solomon's prayer sitting before God that he wished for the gift of wisdom of how best to rule the people of St. Francis. Again, it is usually after great hardships and difficulties in life that people attain the real wisdom that they seek. I hope you remember just again in terms of what we said about St. Francis, after he was a prisoner of war and he returned home, kind of like a loser. His soul was dark, he was lost, a nobody. He was not that great knight that he had hoped to be. Finding himself in an abandoned old church, he finds himself haunted by a darkness that probably was pretty, pretty severe. And as he humbly sits there realizing this new truth in his life, he beckons and he asks God to enlighten the darkness of his own heart, that he might have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity, that he might understand how God was calling him to live in the world. And of course, that prayer that is attributed to St. Francis, what we refer to as the peace prayer, is a prayer that again reminds us about the wisdom that is needed. Because we recognize that there is hate in our world. And where there is hate, let me sow love. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. And of course, this calls us to confront these realities that we cannot change, per se, but we do have the ability 
to choose how to respond to them. And of course, that requires the gift of wisdom. It is my hope and my prayer for all of us gathered here that we will pray more than anything for the gift of wisdom to best understand in light of the truths that we cannot control in our own life, what are the choices that God is enlightening us to make and choices that are really for the better and the good of all and that we will attain this gift of wisdom of how best to respond. And to also pray that we may be examples to Lillianne, whom we are about to welcome into the community of the church, that our own lived example of our Catholic Christian faith will be an inspiration to her as she begins her Christian journey. I would now like to invite her parents and her godparents to go back to the baptismal font in the back of the church and invite everyone to please turn to the back of the church. Okay. Okay. How am I going to get that candle? I don't know. Are you Maria? No. Are you Maria? And you're Mark? Okay. Great. First, I'm going to ask you what name do you give to your child? And then what is it that you ask of the church to say baptism? Okay. Mom and Dad, what name do you give to your child? Liliana. Liliana. And what is it that you are asking of the church? Baptism. In asking to have Liliana baptized, you are accepting the responsibility of raising her up in the faith. It will be your duty to teach her how to live and to love as Jesus Christ has taught us. Are you willing to accept this responsibility and all that it entails? And godparents, are you willing to help the parents to fulfill this role as well? Yes. Okay. Liliana, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Jesus Christ, and I mark you with the sign of the cross. You are now entering into a new relationship with Jesus and the community of the church, and I invite your parents to do the same. My friends, we now ask God to give this child new life through water and the Holy Spirit. Through these waters of baptism, you have filled us with new life and called us to be your children. From all who are baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, you formed a new people, united to your Son, Jesus Christ. You have set us free and filled our hearts with the spirit of love that we may be a people who live in peace. You have called Liliana to this cleansing water and the new birth that she may share in the faith of your church and that she may have eternal life. We ask, Lord God, that you bless this water in which she will be baptized through our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Parents and godparents, I now ask you to renew your own baptismal promises. And after each petition, say, I do. Mom and dad and godparents, do you reject sin that comes in the form of hate, violence, evil, and injustice so as to live in the freedom of God's children? And do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by it? And do you reject Satan, the father of sin, the prince of darkness, and all of his empty promises? And now I ask the rest of the community of St. Francis, as they make their own profession of faith, after each petition, respond, I do. And parents and community of St. Francis, do you believe in God who created all of humanity out of love and is the creator of heaven and earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Holy Spirit, born of, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And do you, the Christian family that is gathered here for worship, promise to provide the living context of faith, hope, and love so that Liliana may grow up easily and knowing, loving God? Do you promise to be of support to these parents who cannot raise Liliana alone in the faith, but must rely on our own lived examples, our prayers, and our love? My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. Let us profess with credibility and give prophetic witness to what we believe. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Okay, Liliana, come on over. <laughs> It's not going to be that bad. Okay. You could like lean her over. Yeah, lean her over some. Yeah, we can hold the back right now. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Liliana, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That was great. Okay, okay, okay. Liliana. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth through water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, may you always serve as a credible member of Christ's body. Liliana, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourself with Christ. In the beautiful white garment that you are wearing, you have been clothed with Jesus Christ. With your family and friends, we are going to help you through word and example to bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. And... I think you have possibilities for the choir here. Godparents, Godparents, Parents and godparents receive the light of Christ. This light is being given to you in order to be kept burning brightly. Liliana has been enlightened by Christ. She is to walk always as a child of the light. May she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart, and when the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints into his heavenly kingdom. The Lord made the deaf hear and the mute speak. May the Lord touch your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his gospel of love. My friends, I now ask you to join with me in welcoming the newest member to our Catholic Christian community, Liliana. Congratulations. Congratulations. I just made a new enemy, but that's okay. <laughs> We now turn to the front of the church and we bring our own prayers before God for Liliana and her family and for all of us gathered here. Keep the, keep the you, I'll give it to you. Okay, okay, all right, don't worry. It's going to be all right. Okay, let's go. grateful hearts, we now bring our own prayers and our needs and our hopes before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church to cast a wide net to embrace people of every kind and leave the separation of good and evil to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of a listening and understanding heart, for the order of bishops and all political leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a peaceful and diplomatic solution to the war in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for strength and courage for people experiencing the damaging effects of climate change. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and those who work our dairies, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise and discerning hearts for counselors and therapists, spiritual directors and confessors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hope for all who mourn and eternal life for our dead in Christ, including Robert J. and Robert M. Keegan, Robert and Catherine Frank, Dominic F. and Anna T. Allegretta, Frederick W. Bernacki, Cheryl Bernacki Evola, and Joseph Masioko. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people and situations that we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Liliana as she begins her Christian journey. May our own examples of our faith influence how she lives and loves as Jesus Christ has taught her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you continue to pour forth your spirit upon all of us gathered here. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith, a certain hope, and a perfect charity as we seek to carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As we prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 445, Seek Ye First, number 445. Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy day, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table, the gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives. May they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and ever-loving God. You have laid the foundations of all the world. You have arranged for the changing of times and seasons. You formed humanity in your own image and likeness and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to guide in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise your mighty works through Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you. And together in one voice, we acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread into his sacred hands. Giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. Be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all your holy people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we stand, and in one voice and one heart, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us become one voice and body of praise, singing hymn number 438, Be Not Afraid, number 438.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, having been fed at your table in this holy sacrament, we ask and pray that the, for this gift, a gift of life and wisdom, that we may grow in grace of seeking to bring about your kingdom here on earth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Before departing again, a special welcome to uh, our newly baptized Lillianne. We are very honored that she has chosen today in our parish community to be baptized in. We welcome her and her family again, and we... Uh Hopefully we can amend our, our uh, um, initial encounter to uh, something that's better and more positive and good, and we'll see the benefit of it. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us, granting us a sense of wisdom and light and all that is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Have a great rest of the day. Have a wonderful week ahead. Stay safe. Enjoy the sun, the summer, it's going to get a little cooler, and thanks for coming. Let us go forth singing hymn number 547, O oh God Beyond All Praising, number 547. already got a spot in the choir. Hello, Dan. How you doing? How are you?